Now tell us about the actual night itself. Was it December 18th? Of yes. 1981? So that was when they attacked the police yes. station. Tell us what you heard so at that time. By this time, of course, the guns had been taken. You know, you know, having more um, lock on the door. I, at 3 o'clock in the morning, 2 o'clock in the morning, I get a call from Mr. Winsky. He says, Prime Minister, I don't know and what is happening. That's the Polish, ex Polish expatriate surveyor, yes. Carol Winsky. And you know when he lived near the he says, I don't know what's happening with the Prime Minister, but I hear a lot of shooting in the police station. Now that afternoon I had had a meeting with the police, I had a meeting every month with them. And a little quarry had arisen there. I think the black child had begun to quarry. And I thought, when I heard so, I said, my God, this thing has exploded, the quarry has exploded in this. The black child was quarrying with someone else? Yes, yeah, so somebody said something and he answered in a way to make the person look stupid. You know, I mean, I can't remember exactly what he was, but... I said, oh God, this thing was a... I, I, I had to intervene to stop it happening. So I thought, this was a blown up again, you know. So I could, he, put, he said, I'm going to put the phone out my window so you can hear it, and I could hear the shots. So I immediately called Philip and told him there is shooting going on in the police station. But be careful, don't approach there directly in your car. You should park somewhere like King George the Fifth Street or somewhere and walk to it. I called um, the man who lived in Lubia, who was the second police. Joseph. Yes. I told him, I said, don't walk all the way. Leave your car in the club and walk down the way. I called Bannis, there was no answer. I said, Bannis must have heard the shooting and he's down here already, you know. I called, um, um, yes, right. And I called, I called the other person. Evans John? Perhaps. But what happened is that if one, the last one I called, didn't put his phone down properly, so he did. So I could nobody could get to me anymore. You know, right line was disconnected. Yeah. Right. But I had called Tom Adams before. No, it was the after that. Anyway, I, so I, I they went down and they were they were trying to get into the army, but couldn't succeed. But they they shot a policeman. Alexander, yes. yes. They shot Philip also. And Philip, too. but Philip didn't listen to me. He, he didn't do what I told him to do. Do you think he was this, this brave guy? This yeah, I think that's what I was told. Who, who, what she knows about that? You know, that sort of thing. You know, this woman knows about that. He was armed, yes. you know, he was armed, but he didn't have a chance. That's right. He almost got killed. But it was his fault. You hear them when I said he'd come in. Banis, Banis walked all the way down from Yes. And, and we never heard, knew that Banis was anywhere there. Yeah. What did Banis so, actually do when he came there? Well, he decided, he saw what was happening and decided what should happen and what people wanted the wrong thing, you know. Mm -hmm. So anyway, they went off to, um, so this happened and I, I, I'm waiting out the news of it. But I called, I called Adam and he told me, and I told him that, of course you can't come in now because we're in the but, but but uh, there, uh, there was an American plane that came in yesterday that came into Fieldfield. It was a large plane, but it's a short stop plane. And maybe you could ask them, let me give the sense of, because we have no arms, we can't get to our arms. If we're, we can barricade the place, we can't get in. And we require arms. So he said, don't worry, I'll fly them down myself. And then I called Martin to the army there. I told them, of course, they had to go to Paris to get permission. And you know, they did send it out the next day. And they sent it to the to which was unusual for the French. Yeah, because we, but they didn't say it was French soldiers on the road, though. Mm -hmm. They still have the airport? Yes. The French soldiers don't, they, they don't usually want to appear to be participating in it, but they give you all the equipment you want. Okay. So, so the French soldiers who actually came, where were they? I think they stayed at the airport. They stayed at the airport? But they probably went back on the plane or something. But anyway, this was, This is what happened, but they, they, they were not able to open the army. Right. Now the thing is that at the meeting I had the day before, I had a meeting with the officers, and I had said that we must need another army for the war. Come on now, we want army. Hello? Yeah. We can't have only one army, we must build an army for the war. And I had made that decision the day before. Right. So I think that was on the mind in the way, but it was a terrible thing. Yes, because, I mean, it was the first attempt at coronation. In a way, it was, it was very good that it failed, because I think that would have set a precedent, don't you think? Mm -hmm. 
because I guess once in African countries and Latin American countries, once that proceeds. No, when no, when 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 no, I my phone was disconnected because I was listening in the phone by the person. Adam tried to get me, couldn't get me, so he got right. worried. Right. So he, but he remembered there was a lawyer in Dominica who was married to a Barbadian lawyer, so he called Dyer. Ah, he got the number, called Dyer. And told Dyer, I can't get hold of Prime Minister Charles, what has happened? But you know, I never call any of the ministers, you know, what yes. happened. Yes, yes. I called the police. That's right. Because you know, the ministers really yes. can't do And they required to be guiding more anything else. Yes. So, and Dyer was able to call the. the um, people who had told them that the Prime Minister's phone is out of order, check your keyboard and see Because at that time, did people may be concerned about your mm. safety? Did you have any guards at that time? Yes, I had two police. I had call the police and tell them. I had two police and guards and call and tell them what had happened. Well, they didn't know anything. But, but all the police came into my home after that. You know, was, you yeah. know, they all at the police station. So. During, during all of that, did you have any concern for your safety? Mm -hmm. Did you ever say I didn't think that they were looking for me quite frankly. Right. Though they might have come against me, but I never thought of that quite yeah. ever Did you ever think of, 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 of going to the range and learning how to shoot or anything like that? Oh, no. no interesting. Have you ever been I gave them a range, the first thing I did. And they wanted to call the range up and I said, nothing doing. You wanted to call it after you? Yeah, I said, nothing doing. Where was that? It's up at Diablo 10. So right. I said, call the Diablo 10 range. Not, yes, right. Not usually. No, I got them at the street, They call it Tropito range. That's why it is. What do you want to call it after me for? Okay. No, it was after that that I guess, well, more or less after Grenada that the Americans started assisting Monica militarily. No, they, had, they were helping us before with the RSS. thing is that the Americans have a problem. They can't help police, and we don't have any army. But they were able to find a way to help the RSS. And through the RSS and so on. Yes, and that's exactly to us. Do you believe in order to have a balance of power, it would be appropriate to have a volunteer uh, civilian defense force. Yes, you have to be careful though. It's, you, the people go where their emotions are. You have a, you have voluntary defense force and they're patriotites. Where are you? Where are you? Where are you? Where are you? So you're saying that that I might... I think better you have a good police force. But I don't think kind of, First of all, I, more money was being spent on the 99 army um, than 300 police. Um. How is that so with the salaries of the inspectors and all that kind of thing? That is how they were doing it. That's amazing. They, they, every vehicle they wanted, they got. The police couldn't get vehicles, but the army had vehicles breaking up and mashing up all over the place. Mm -hmm. And the thing is that they were not suitable people to be in the army. The way they were, there were some of them were illiterate. Right. I mean, how can you take the, the, the brother of the man, the woman you sleep with to make a soldier because of that night? That's only way you want to pay a woman for, for um, sleeping with you. That's right. Some people thought that, that you should. Yeah. Some people thought that you should uh, not have patented Patrick John for treason. I, well, I didn't find for treason. The, the advice was that we could have taken him for treason, but treason is the death penalty, and he had been a popular, and people might not have convicted him because it was the death penalty. I so, so I took the advice of the lawyers to take the law and lower charge. So what was he convicted of? The conspiracy. What but about then, no, they said I, I pardoned him before his 12 years are up. But if I had not, he would have been coming out of his 12 years in time for this last election. Having served his full time, he'd have come out a martyr. I Should him out first because I knew he would let his backside out. Wanted him up. And the, so I bought his, the wind would be way back and they would see him in his reality. And I was done again. There are some people who thought that as a condition of his release, he should have been made to sign an agreement that he would not enter politics again. You can't do that. People have the freedom, the democracy. But well, don't you believe that when you've committed a crime? I don't think that, you should be allowed to do it. The law doesn't say that. Yes. Yes. But don't you think that is a prerogative that the government would have had, considering the fact that the guy, even if the, even if the lawyers decided that treason would have been if really it, if the difficult? Court, the court could have put him in a like, the, decision. Yes. But they found him guilty, they didn't like him, not guilty. And they sentenced him to, to prison. Maybe they should have that should have been part of the sentence. Yeah. That when he serves his term, or when he's out of prison, he can no longer uh, rep, um, put himself up to represent the people. The hanging of Newton. Some people thought that uh, if Patrick John should have been could have been pardoned, maybe even if that happened at a later date, that uh, maybe Newton should have been. No man, Newton, Newton had led a group of men and he killed a policeman quite innocently. And if it was wrong, 
he was the one in charge of the group, he was no doubt about that. Too. There are people who say that Newton may have been the actual pastor, the agent, the agent but that the intellectual, the intellectual author was actually Patrick John. No, no, no. In this case, it was, it, they had decided to go in and get Patrick and they were going to get the arms to do it. But it was Newton who, and he the one who called the meeting of the men in the gardens before to talk about it. So he must pay for it. When, he, when one man dies as a result of his conspiracy, he must pay for it. I'm going to talk about a few other things having to do with government. Mm -hmm. The your years in power, which which of those years do you think were your best years? No years were the best years. All years were bad years because we never had any money. And you can't run a country without money. And so it, just, it was hard work the whole time. Are you and it was really hard because you had to decide priorities. And not everybody agreed with your priorities. Too. When you say we don't have money, you're saying that the government is const constantly running the, the government uh, or the country? The government never made deficit. enough revenue to be able to pay properly for all the things that require to be done. What are the most profitable arms of the government in, in line revenue service? When I say profitable, where, where, do we do, where do we derive most income from? Which, what from is that? Customs. customs. Although we don't charge for things going out, only for things coming in yeah. customs. Customs. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're talking about but the it's import. The port is borrowing money to build itself. It's always able to pay off its debt. I see. Yeah. Up to now, I don't know what those crazy people are going to do. Okay, so you're saying the airport and the harbor, the deepwater harbor, the deep harbor have been the most really profitable or the most yes. income generating. It's the easiest way to collect money too, because you don't get your goods to your pay. Right. You know what I mean? Right. Yes. What 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 areas of government, let's say, are, are the most expensive to maintain and the least, let's say, the teaching and the, the, the health and education. If only has the largest number of people. You, you can't help it. You require to have people. You, I mean, you can't have a school without teachers. What creative ways do you think one can utilize uh, to increase perhaps government revenue from the health service or the education I think that people must pay a user fee. If you come into a hospital, you can't pay five dollars a day. It's not sufficient. Well, I, they try. This government tried to raise it to fifty. I think it's too sharp a raise. I think we should increase it by ten, perhaps in two years' time, increase it by twenty, and so on. You know. What about um, schools? Do you think there's any way that different communities can be made to pay taxes to support schools? No, I don't think so. I think you have to continue having free education. Otherwise, people will not. Go, although school is compulsory, they will not go to school. And an uneducated, you might be much better not have a country at all than have an uneducated people in the country. Okay. Um, I think we have to do a lot more work about training our teachers. I, I think that we are not really making the teachers want to do a good job. So how do you do that? Not only giving them the training, but giving them the desire to make the children learn more and be better teachers. We're not doing that. How do you create that, that, that desire? How do you create that? No, it's, it's, it's a matter of... And people are getting worse and worse all over the world, you know, now. You know, they, in character and morale, people are getting less and less than they were before. So oh. I don't know, we can, we can we're talking about a culture, then, that is devoid of social responsibility? That's right. Tell me and how you that... Require that to, you require that to be built up. How do you do it? Tell me how that culture of laxity or indiscipline, which is what my older mm -hmm. uncle, a musician, mm -hmm. was, you know, as a great disciplinarian, mm -hmm. plays into the entire question of, or is tied to the entire question of Americanization of our culture via cable television. I think that, that helps. It helps to prevent people from being able to think properly about what is right and what is wrong. But apart from that, people that just think that Whatever you can get, get it. It doesn't matter how you get it. And that's bad, you know? I worry about it very much. Is, is there anything you can suggest that we can do as Dominicans overseas to assist Dominicans uplift? Well, I wonder if, if you would you, write... You, you're talking articles, about Dominicans overseas? Dominicans abroad. To write simple articles. Based on what you see here, and how it, the impact would be different if you use differently at home, if that would help. You know, people are not reading enough at home either. And I wonder if it, it don't require more 
point in the articles for, for people to read and appreciate and understand. Well, I'm very happy that there's a new newspaper, it's a third mm -hmm. newspaper. Mm -hmm. I'll show you a copy of it, a couple mm -hmm. copies. Uh, the association here has made books mm -hmm. to uh, the Ministry of Education at the time of Mr. Sorrento. 1993 mm -hmm. was the last donation of $10,000 of books. Mm -hmm. So uh, we, we very much appreciate that and I'm sure that's something we'd like to follow up on. What about money? How could we add to Dominica's foreign exchange earnings or income? Well, by deposits in the bank. But you can, if it's through a national bank, you can ask for it, you put towards the housing window. Because I have always felt that people's esteem of themselves grow if they own their own property. I think people are prepared to make sacrifices if they own their own property. If they're renting from a person, they don't give a hoot, you know. And I think it's important to encourage everybody to own their own. Okay. I'm very keen on that. What do you believe was your legacy as Prime Minister with regard to education? What are you proudest uh, most about? Why do you think people less people think that? I to realize that there's never a time to stop learning. Because the adult education, nobody talks about the adult education program we put through. It's very, it's very important. Then people who never could read and write, or if they did learn, they forgot the school they left school before, they never practiced it, at least can begin learning, learning something. And I think it's important. I think that the legacy is that you're never too old to learn. You're never too uneducated to learn. That in fact, the only future for you is to continue learning. I think that's important. What about your legacy in agriculture? Diversification was one of your... Yeah, when uh, people in that accepted, they were the opposition was so busy not telling people not to do it, that it hasn't succeeded. But I think now the farmers are realizing that I was wrong and I tell them to diversify. I went to the French Hebrew Hebrew thing and do flowers with us and things like that, you know. Do you believe that the American government is being helpful to us? And not at all. They're not interested. In the American government is not interested in anything unless it's a crisis. We're not a Bosnia, so we don't come. Uh, I guess this is maybe an, in an interesting time to segue into diplomacy. Which countries do you believe have been most helpful to us in our development? Canada, France, England. What about Taiwan? Yes, Taiwan is helpful, especially in the agricultural field. They've helped us. They've taught our people because the variety of vegetables you get at home in the market now is surprising. You know, it's all because of Taiwan and what they've done. And the fact that they've brought in pawpaw is a legitimate thing that can be exported. I think they've brought it to Miami now. And um, peppers and things like They really have helped in the diversification. Oh, the but you see, the, the opposition was preventing it happening because they were saying, you don't require diversifiers. You want you to leave fig and fig is better for you. I told you people don't let fig leave you, you must leave it before it leaves you. And they took it to me and I said, get out of fig. I'm saying, no, you must have other things besides fig. Well, when you say fig, you, you mean bananas. bananas because mm -hmm. here in the United States, figs are I know, different. I know. Yeah. Um, with regard to the Taiwanese, do they give scholarships? Yes, they just give them scholarships to people. But it was, I, I, I wonder about it. If the language is Chinese, I mean. I just saw an article in the Washington Post, China's economy is scheduled to pass the United States in the year 2000. Right. China is, yeah. China, mainland China. Mainland China. That's right. So maybe it might be good to have some Chinese speaking non mm -hmm. I know What I'm saying is that I don't know if if you can, they, they've just, they're given scholarships to do with trade and I would like them to do trade and development, but you must, to go and get a scholarship you must learn the language. I imagine unless it's being given in English, I don't know. Tell us about France. How has France helped? In, many, in our health, you know, for, for 20 years, the French have given us medical doctors to do work for us in our villages, which has helped. And every time they send doctors, they have to send equipment. So I always ask for a different specialist. So I can make <laughs> they didn't like they're, going to, they're going to do our new surgery for us. At least they promised to, but I don't, this government is paying the ass for them. I can get it. I don't know. Well, they did uh, do a new wing of the hospital, I saw that. Uh, no, I see, we did not know, sir, but I knew that I had asked them for surgery, and I knew that they would not do it unless they saw us doing something for ourselves. So I, I borrowed the money and did the new children's or the new maternity ward. What about the new casualty? Who did that? Well, they did that before. Yes, they did That's that. a very they good thing. Yes, yes, very good. Yes. Is it computerized also? I think so. Mm -hmm. I think it's computerized.
What about India? What has England done in recent times? Well, you had Brazil with the banana industry. You know, without them, we would know what to do with Brussels and the banana industry. And what about grants for major projects? In Rouge. Not, no, I don't see it. And then Britain promised me, well, they did the Bayfront, which was a three million pound job, which is a, but without it, Rosa would have gone last year in the Minister. Yeah. But they would like, I think they would do more, because they, they promised me when they came to do the, open the Bayfront of the safe was in use and the, tel and, the, and the new post office, they promised me five million pounds. But they told this company they're not giving them unless they take a, a project with the IFM because they don't trust the way they spend the money. Another thing the company is doing now, they get a Barbadian contractor to build a bridge for them and the contractor puts the money in for the bridge and they all demand the bridge cost at interest. I mean, you might, a bridge you must get from a country is given to you free, you know? Yes. What about the Canadians? What have the Canadians done? They did a lot for us in water and they had a plan to do the whole of the roads of sewage again because that's more than a hundred years old. And they had begun the work because they had very te um, great technique where you could look through a television, you could see all these shore lines, see that little block where they hadn't been used for years and things like that. And they were going to put in the water in Roseau. But um, this, uh, the, the government want other things extra, they always find up things, so they can't get the basics, you know. What do you believe is... In they seem to think that if Canada says we help you in that, you can demand more from Canada, but Canada has its own problems, you know. Right. How important is uh, the art or the skill of diplomacy for a small developing country like Dominica? I think it's important, but you cannot afford to pay for diplomats all over the world. So you have to get people who are suitable and who will do it for you for nothing. And this is what I have done all the time. Can you give us so, some examples? Like Mrs. Benjamin, she works at FAO and we don't pay her salary, you know. That's the Food and Agriculture Organization of the United yes, Nations? Yes, and she's got a lot of little things for us. And where is she located? Well, she's located both here and in, in Rome. She mean works for us in Rome, she doesn't work here for us. Any other examples? Of that? Yes, uh, um, there's... Um, well, Baron, of course, never got paid. Yeah, you would pay his cost of traveling, but that's all. And Wati never got paid. You mean Dr. Wati, who yeah. was ambassador to the United yeah. States? Baron was ambassador to the United, United Nations. States first, and then to the United Nations, and then to, to England, too, was one. At OES also? Yes, and got a lot of things for us. In fact, we would not have had the electricity in the East Coast if Baron had been representing us over here. He really fought hard for it. And buying trouble, some you know. Was that paid through the uh, USAID? Was that USAID? Yes, USAID was that one. What about in Europe? Did we have any representatives who were volunteers? Well, we know in Europe we we have because we have an OECS man there looking after us. But Europe is Brussels is the place I visited oftenest, and you have to go there yourself to ding dong there. Yeah. And they haven't been to Brussels once in there. And we get money from Brussels, and it's there for us to get. How important do you believe are Dominican associations of the seas, and how did your government work with those associations? Well, it, it was the British ones particularly. They had, Britain had, must have more association, Dominican than than any other part of the world. Every little town has its own, Preston has its own, London has its own, and so on. But, but with, with Ellen, Ellen got them together, so they worked together. And I think it's good. I want, but I want them to have an association at home. It looks after their interests of course. How did you work alongside the associations in the United States? Did you have any I, the, I always went to, whenever I went there, I saw them. But I haven't had, I find that the, the British associations are more, more inclined to do things for Dominica than the Americans. And yet the Americans must be better off, I think, too. Well, I think the Dominican associations in England are a little more established mm -hmm. because Dominican started going there big time in the 1960s. Yeah, and they went together, so they went together. stayed together. Whereas the associations here are more or less on the side. There's a long back. There's a very old one. There's a very old one. But the people are older, and then the new ones are not there when they start. And the young people are not joining the old ones. That's right, that's right. So we have a disconnect, and in fact, we're working on that. But then that will be my interview, not yours, I don't know. You know, but, but 
you're right. There's there is there's great need mm -hmm. for more of that. Uh, is there anything you can recommend to the governments that will come after? Well, that uh, now they and others to to, to facilitate that interaction between the Dominic and the Dominic. You yeah, have to give leeway to the people in charge of organizations, for post associations. It wasn't always done through a government minister. I mean, the national bank, Lewis, Lewis came up here, and he just come up for some meeting. You have to meet them and talk with them and tell them how they should do it and what they should do. Okay. Okay. But I intend to go back and the, the, the returned UK people have formed an association at home. So I want to go back and work with them. Okay. What do you believe was your contribution to the development of women and women affairs? In I think mainly that women... Women looked at me and thought I had achieved, and so they learned to achieve too. I don't think that I, I did anything, I didn't hit any spots, I and mean, they themselves saw the spots and moved on. Do you see yourself as a feminist? No, no I'm not. I believe that a woman can do anything she puts her mind to. And I think that women have always been important in politics in Dominica, even before they had the vote. But I don't think I'm a feminist. So I don't believe that, that women must be put in charge of everything. I just think that women should have an equal right to do the things that they can do. I think most people characterize that as a feminist position, even if you do not consider it such. Yeah. <laughs> well, that is not. I mean, feminist is a person who thinks that because you're a woman, you should be in charge of things. I don't think so. Okay. What about the Dominican Medical School? How helpful has that been to all local economy? Not at all. I think if, well, it helps the people in Portsmouth who have houses to rent and so on. And that is why I allowed it to stay on. But I haven't got any I haven't got any faith in the man who runs it. I think he's a damn cook. And I don't think he's interested in Dominique. I think he's interested in making money. And now that he has they're refusing to assist them now. They're refusing to recognize him now. And I don't think he should be recognizing him. Yeah. I think that um I, I don't have any I but don't have any faith in him. But don't you think that if the eight hundred to a thousand students are made to leave because of the failure of Oh the it would it would it would be bad for the sports material. But I, but he would like to have his, put up his own dormitories, you know. Mm -hmm. When I made him give me the land in exchange for the debt he owed me, mm -hmm. he says, why can't we put up um, boarding houses on the, on this land and government and myself? The guy said, get the hell out, man. I want ports for people to make money, not you. <laughs> That's right, because then he would be... No, I said, the only reason you're still here is because Port is making me to send out of you, and otherwise I wouldn't even bother you that you speak out to you. Tell us about the future of tourism. I think there's a great future there. I think that um, more and more hotels are being built, and I think we must build more and more simple hotels in the hills and mountains if we go look for that. But I think, and also, I think we will ask for the money for a long time and try and get money to put in proper access to the beauty spots. But I think in each of those beauty spots, private sector must be encouraged to develop the bathrooms, the restaurant. That's not government business. But you must do something to encourage them to come there. They give them the land in a dollar a year or something, but you must encourage them to do it. Because people want to go to a restroom, people want to have a drink, and it must be done properly and decently. But it must not be done by government. It must be done by private sector. So you're saying that someone can open a small business basically doing public toilets? That's right. And charge a fee? That's right, and have them there. And you're saying that the management... And the same person could be running a restaurant there. But not even a big restaurant, you know, a real um, quick food thing. You know, people don't want to go and have, they don't want to have a folk, folk thing in the place like that. So it's a they restaurant. want to have a drink, they want to have a beer, they want to have a juice, they want to have a sandwich and something like that. Perhaps fried chicken or fried crap or something, you know what I mean? Culture. But it must be the private sector. You must go out, advertise it, show them how they're going to get assistance to do it, and let them let them do it. How important do you believe is culture in nation nation building? I think it's very important, and I think that even at these beauty spots, you have the chance to get people in the area to come and do a little cultural dance. Not a not a, a four night four hour thing, you know, a short thing which shows off Dominica culture. Right. Problems in governance. What do, you, what do you think were some of the problems that you found out existed with the civil, civil service and the people with whom you worked? I, I didn't have trouble with the civil service. I worked well with them. But I, found, I find that people individually want you to do for them whatever they want. They feel that they're entitled. They tell you they voted for you and therefore you must give them that. 
Aquele é um rol do Ingram e o 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 Ingram e o